When entering the seafaring city of Anvil, we stop by the Majors Guild for some alchemical supplies. Inside the dining hall, we then bump into a diminutive Bosma, one of the few people in Cyrodiil to have managed to tame an imp named Sparky, although this has not done much for his manners as he reluctantly breathes. Oh, it's you. I greet you, Thorin, journeyman of the Majors Guild. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Thorin. What are you doing here in Anvil? I believe some people think of Anvil as a slow, sleepy place compared to Eastern Cyrodiil, but there's plenty of trouble up north to be found. Huh. Trouble up north. Sounds like you're thinking of something specific. There's a Malakath shrine west of Fort Such, west of the Gold Road to Hammerfell. But I stay away. I like my skin on the outside in one piece. Farewell. Ugh. His quip about losing his skin sounds rather nasty. Exiting the guild hall in the city, we then bump into local huntsman Pinarus Inventius. What can I do for you? As with other Daedric quests, you must have already read Modern Heretics or have spoken with Yulene Lervu about Chadenhall to have him even mention the Daedric dialogue available. And we inquire. I just came from the Mages Guild in town and heard there's a shrine to Malakath north of the Gold Road. Though we didn't say where. Would you be able to help me mark it on my map perchance? Only if you've seen it, of course. I saw a big statue of Malakath. West of Fort Such, west of the Gold Road to Hammerfell. It looked like Daedra worshippers to me. Good day. It should quickly be noted, Pinarus may be wearing mismatching armor due to seductive sirens that pinched his gear in a previous quest linked at the end of this video, much to the chagrin of his wife, I might add. Astio Inventius, wife of the woodsman Pinarus Inventius. Always out hunting. Anything to avoid doing a little work around the house. We, however, are forgoing meeting some beautiful and buxom vixens praying to the Aedra of debauchery Debella in favour of heading north to search for the statue of Malakath, patron god to the maligned orcs of the region. Nearing the clandestine shrine at night, we find three awesome adherents in various states of worship, two of which are barefoot. On closer inspection, we see Malakath depicted as a large orc hefting a sizable two-handed sword over his head. This must be the fabled sword Volendrung we'd read about in Modern Heretics. Dismounting our horse, we then approach the closest follower, the boot-wearing Gorub Gro Ugdub. Were you invited? I didn't invite you. Approaching the next apparent zealot mid-prayer, the shoeless Mug Gro Murgak, and he questions. Who's talking to you? I'm not. Enervated by our lack of welcome, we next speak to the leader of the rabble, the barefoot, axe-wearing Shobub Gro Rugdush, who scorns. You dare come here to the shrine of our lord? You are not one of us. Look, I was told this was the shrine of Malakath, defender of the betrayed, and I'm looking for the Daedra's favor. I guess you haven't heard. We don't like the beautiful people. But maybe you can persuade me your ugly inside. Persuading, Shy Bob, we bribe. Make it quick. See, was that hard? So, you were saying how to meet the creator of curses. You're not one of Malakoth's favorite people. He likes orcs. Too bad for you. So you approach his shrine at your own risk. Now, you're probably wondering, what would happen if we were an orc right now? Well, all of these interactions with the orcs and Malakath himself would be vastly different, and we'll explore the orc path as soon as we've spoken to Malakath. Until then, we can say, You know what? I do like my skin on the outside. I, I won't approach the shrine. Afraid he might mess up that pretty face? Good thinking. Otherwise, you think I'm scared just because I'm human? I'll approach the shrine. Then go on and do your approaching. But Malakath wants a present. He likes troll fat. Go then. Exiting the camp, a quest and updates. One of Malakath's worshippers has told me that in order to have the Daedra summoned, I must leave an offering of troll fat at the statue. You must be level 10 to begin this quest. 
Troll fat obviously is procured from dead trolls and can be found in many places across Cyrodiil, including caves and mines. However, for today, the easiest place to happen across a fresh sample is in the Skingrad Mages Guild living quarters, behind a display case with a hard lock. Returning to the shrine, we offer the troll fat to the altar of Malakath. You brought a present? Good, that's smart. You want something? And if you're smart, you do what I tell you. Lord Drad took my orders. Says he owns them. Lying maggot! They're my orders! Lord Drad put my little brothers in chains, working in the mines. I don't like that! Get over to Lord Dread's estate. Let my ogres loose and get them out. Okay? Get going! Just quickly, before we commence Malakath's quest, we will explore which unique dialogue we can expect if we approach the shrine as an orc. Some initial dialogue, such as between Mug Grow Mergle, would remain the same. Who's talking to you? I'm not. However, when we speak to Shobob, he welcomes. You found the shrine of the Lord Malakath, friend orc. You are welcome here. Thank you, brother. I'm looking to see the boss. Malakath likes orcs. When he likes anything. So you can approach the shrine. He won't hurt you, really. Go ahead. We can then similarly respond. Uh, I don't think I'll approach the shrine. Good thinking. You want to keep your good looks? Go talk to some nice pretty gods. Otherwise, time to see the big man. Orcs are always welcome. But Malakath wants a present. Like troll fat. And only troll fat. I'll be here. You've been told what you have to do. Bringing Malakath the troll fat, he delightedly greets. Nice present. Good. And from a nice orc, too. Double good. Orcs are smart. They know you want something. You do what boss tells you. So listen good. Lord Drad took my orders. Poxy White Skin says he owns them. Lying maggot! They're my ogres! So, this Lord Drag, he puts my little brothers in chains, working in the mines, and it makes me mad. So, you get over to Lord Drag's estate, get my ogres loose, and get them out. Do it now! For me! The boss! Malakath must think you're okay. <laughs> Congratulations. You must be as ugly and disgusting as the rest of us. I'll be here. From this point, the quest plays out similarly as it updates. When I left the offering, Malakath was summoned and spoke to me. He tasked me with traveling to the estate of Lord Drad and freeing his ogre slaves. Of course, working for the Daedra Prince of Lies, Deception and Hypocrisy, we can choose to succeed or fail the quest, which we will soon explore both options. For now, we ride southeast of the shrine and find a sprawling estate comprised of vegetable crops and stable plus three buildings, a large estate home plus two outbuildings. Making a beeline for the slave quarters, we find the door handily unlocked. Bursting inside, however, there is no sign of the ogres to be freed in either building, bar the remnants of the beast's mess, as they expectedly live in a disheveled squalor, with all manner of debris littering the grounds inside their meager slave quarters. Making our way to the foreboding large estate, we open the double doors and see... The incensed estate owner who barks. This is your last warning. Get out! or I'll call the guards and have you arrested. Quickly looking around to gain our bearings, we see a Dunma couple alone in a two-story abode, some of their possessions still in boxes, as they haven't seemed to fully moved in. With quick thinking, we say, By Azura, by Azura, by Azura! 
Is this the Lord Drad? I can't believe we're neighbors. I welcome you to my humble home, stranger. What brings you to this place? Well, sir, I just had to see your estate. What brings you to the Gold Coast? The land is good. The farm productive. But it's mining the wealth from beneath the land that will make my fortune. I'd heard there was good mining here, to be sure. So you're using ogres to mine, then? Can you think of a better use for the mindless beasts? Under my eye, they do some good in this world. We now have two distinct options to respond, which changes how the drads feel about us. If we first dispute, no creature should be a slave. I knew you dirty dark elves would bring your barbarism here. I don't believe I asked for your opinion on this matter. I am done speaking with you. Please leave my estate. A quest would update. I've spoken with Lord Drad. He believes the ogres to be suitable slaves, as it does not violate imperial law. I fear I've angered him, though, and he will no longer speak with me. Perhaps his wife will be more forthcoming. Though perhaps not, as both run upstairs to find a weapon and cannot be conversed with. Take that! Show me what you do got. your worst! If we instead made a beeline for Lady Drad, pre commotion she would beg. I'm afraid you've upset my husband. Please leave before he loses his temper. I beg you. I understand. I just wanted to learn more about the land. Drad purchased the land and title from council. It cost him a fortune, and he's determined to make it pay. How do you feel about making your fortune through ogre slaves? I can't tell you about that. Please, just go. We'll see. How about if I help out with a few coins? He was that hard. <laughs> can't do better than that. He works them in bleak mine. It's terrible. The guards beat the creatures mercilessly. That's all I can tell you. Now please go. Good day. We then have our quest update. Lady Drad has told me that the ogres are located in Bleak Mine not far from here. I will have to go free them to appease Malakath. However, if we originally had instead complimented Drad about his ogre slaves, he would have also shared. I am quite pleased with the ogre slaves in my Bleak Mine. No issues of slavery with brute beasts. Profitable and legal. Bleak mine, you say? Hmm, sounds profitable. The source of my income, of course. I bought it for a song from a foolish orc. My ogres mine the gold, and I reap the reward. Bye. Heading southeast, our quest similarly would update. I've spoken with Lord Drad. He believes the ogres to be suitable slaves as they are mindless beasts and is pleased with the ogres he used in Bleak Mine. It appears I will have to free the ogres myself if I am to complete Malakath's task for me. Approaching the mine, we find its entrance is barred by a leveled lock, so it should be noted if we were keeping our eyes open at the Drad estate, we could have found the Bleak Mine key on a small table in the sitting room. Put Stop! that back, you thief! worthless thief! Once inside the mine, our quest updates. I've entered Bleak Mine. Now I must free Malakath's ogres. Dousing our torch, we fear we've been made as we creep closer to a conversation between guards. Hi there. How are things? What's the news from the other parts of Tamrio? They say that slavery has been abolished in Morrowind. House Dress and Lalu have renounced the slave trade and freed the beast folk from servitude. It is not surprising, considering Morrowind's violent past. We can only hope the troubles subside quickly. Goodbye. Bye. Unfortunately, our troubles are just beginning, as we're then forced to leap out of the shadows to meet a horrible fate. Hello? Look out! Who's there? <laughs> die! Damn you! <laughs> die! Good to see you. 
if instead of getting into a brawl when we entered the mine, we could slip past the guards in the main shaft, heading east down a side passage where we could either sneak past or snipe the first guard who, like his dark elf counterparts, holds an array of dwarven or orcish armor and weaponry, plus one of the two keys to the ogre's cells. Goodbye. Bye. Dispatching the second dwarven garbed guard and the third, <laughs> We dip into the seconds pockets to find both sets of keys needed to free the ogres, being the shiny and tarnished ogre keys. Heading northeast, we then see the guards from the main hall have finished their conversation and have begun approaching the ogres' cells to do their rounds. Evading the guards hot on our heels, we then round a corner to our right to see the slave ogres caged. Opening the door with a shiny key, we note. I have freed one of the groups of ogres. I must check to see if there are more to be freed. The liberated ogres, seeing their captors, ignore us as an all-out brawl breaks out. With all the guards either pummeled to death or full of arrows. We then follow the ogres past the main shaft of the gold mine, which, to be fair, does look quite bountiful, and into the northwestern branch of the tunnels. Inside, we see a guard's mess hall, and on the far wall, a chest of their belongings, which is comprised of not only leveled swords, a poison, and soul gem, but also 346 gold for the taking. We then, using our tarnished key, we notice in our journal. I freed all the ogres in the bleak mine. I should return to the shrine of Malakath. As we exit the mine victorious, we spy in the distance a few beings working the field under the watchful eye of an ogre. Approaching, we see it's indeed Lord Drad in beggar's attire, and he anxiously whispers, Please, I've got to get to work. If I don't, who knows what those ogres will do to me? Seeing his wife, Lady Drad, in a similar predicament, she sullenly acknowledges. Now my poor husband is the slave, and the ogres are his masters. They haven't harmed us, but he's never worked so hard in his life. Seeing justice done for the poor ex-slaves, now overlooking their new servants, we can choose to fail the quest by taking pity on Drad, or perhaps agreeing ogres are farm tools and nothing more, and execute every last ogre on his once pristine property. Look out! Unfortunately, if we speak to Drad, he would still be digging the garden. Please, I've got to get to work. All we have left is the farm. His wife, disgusted with us, shoes. You've murdered the poor beasts and ruined us. Leave us alone. What a terrible fate to have to be a farmer instead of a slave, eh? We can also attempt to approach Malakath at his shrine to see if the Prince of Hypocrisy can see the irony in our actions, but a pop-up simply states, Malakath wanted his ogres freed, not killed. Now there's no chance of earning the reward he promised. Although there is no voice line present, Malakath's disembodied voice was also supposed to claim, Malakath wants you to free his ogres, not kill them. No present for you. If we instead had succeeded the quest and allowed the ogres to take Drad's estate for themselves and approach Malakath's shrine, he would have congratulated. Good job! No one owns ogres but me! And I fix that maggot. The ogres own Drad. Make Drad eat death. <laughs> now you get a present. Keep up the good work, and be nice to my little brothers. Our quest would then update. Malakath was satisfied with my efforts to free the ogres. He's rewarded me with Volendrung. 
Volendrung, for longtime fans, is a Daedric artifact and gigantic, powerful two handed Dwemer Warhammer. It's enchanted with drain health and, more importantly, three seconds of paralyze. Malakath's priest then begrudgingly congratulates. Malakath likes you. You don't look very foul or ugly, but just keep doing ugly stuff and you'll be fine. Good fortune, Volendrung. Although it should be noted, none of the quest dialogue outside of the start of the quest would change if you're an orc. What does change is the Drad's essential status, which is removed upon completion of the quest, and we get to give the two lovebirds a taste of our Please, hammer. I've got to get to work. If I don't, who knows what those ogres will do to me? That's it for the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel in a more personal way, our Patreon is linked on screen, which makes these longer lore videos possible. As always, thanks for watching. And until next time, traveler.